Hello and welcome to another week of Talk of the Town. First to the Port Adelaide Premiership champion. G'day, Warren Treadray. Good afternoon, should I say. It is a wonderful day here in beautiful Adelaide. Is the sun come out in Melbourne or not? <laughs> <laughs> it won't for another three months. Sammy That's McClure, okay. the Chief Football Reporter for Channel 9. G'day to you. Hello, Seb. And obviously, Treaders, it's sunny enough to get out to the uh, hairdressers in South Australia. It looks like you've had a fresh cut. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. I do my own every week. As for you, that's the best looking wig I've seen in a long, long time. Oh, yeah, he's getting, he's getting <laughs> sitting on top, isn't it? A yeah. little, bit, little bit up. Shots fired. Oh, look at that. It's yeah, sort of beetle juice. There's a bit to it. There's yeah. no tricks in this book over here. <laughs> no. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's good to see both of you. And I want to start with uh, some of the off-field controversies that we've seen. First, Lockie Hunter, of course, for the Western Bulldogs, uh, had quite a night. He's lost the vice captaincy as a result of it. But in the aftermath of that, when the whole football world was talking about Lockie Hunter, the Adelaide Crows quietly released that a week earlier, Tyson Stengel, one of their young players, had a drink-driving incident as well. Tredis, was this a cover-up? Absolutely. Absolutely it was. And football clubs do it all the time. And if they can prevent a headline, they will try and do it. I was in the Adelaide Nine News uh, room and getting ready for the sports break that I do over here. And all of a sudden, our uh, editorial desk exploded. What? The Crows have what? Jeez, they've hidden that well. And I actually started laughing because I've sat on both sides of the fence. I know exactly what the media are looking for. And I know what the footy clubs try and do. The facts are the Adelaide Footy Club were telling people off the record it actually happened Good Friday. All of a sudden, they realised it actually happened Thursday morning. So to sit on it for over a week, they can't say he... Yes, he didn't tell them for a couple of days, but they weren't totally transparent. They didn't come out and say... that They knew that there was a big story over the border in Melbourne with Hunter and they thought they'd try and sneak it in, just a, in, in, in TV terms, a little VO, a bit of voice, a bit of information, a bit of... Uh, and for radio, a small little grab or in the paper, or oh, only a couple of bylines. All of a sudden, it blew up in their face. Sammy, do you think uh, that that's a fair assessment of the situation that uh, that the Crows are looking to minimise or, or, or perform damage control? I do now. I didn't initially. Um, Adam Kelly's there. Then you had a footy, and we had him on radio not long ago. We oh, I took him at, at face value. You know they've been through a lot this footy club, and uh, yeah, it's fair to say I've probably been on um, on the other end, giving a bit to them quite deservedly for what happened in the camp. But I took this one on face value. And then I thought to myself, okay, the Bulldogs took a while to investigate what happened with Lockie Hunter, but he hit four parked cars, two of which belonged to his teammate's girlfriend, (laughs) had a teammate drive him to another teammate's house where they then continued to have beers, and then the police caught up with him two hours later. You can understand why they were investigating for a little while. The other one seemed to me with Tyson Stengeltred is pretty cut and dry. Um, I'm not sure why they needed to investigate as much as they did. It's not as though the AFL Integrity Unit needed something to investigate. And even in the last 24 hours, we've had mixed messages from their their coach, their new coach, Matthew Nix, and uh, Andrew Fagan, their CEO. So it's just not a good look for the Crows, particularly what um, they've been through. But all in all, I've got to say, it's it's not the biggest issue of all time. Having said that, they've probably made it bigger by holding it off. Yeah, I agree. Exactly that point. I don't know why footy clubs even think they can maybe try and get away or minimise the damage. I think the sooner you come out and go, bang, yes, it was two days late, but When Matthew Nix goes on radio today, their senior coach, as you say, saying we could have handled it better, well, why isn't that coming from your CEO? Why isn't that coming from your GM of communications? They're the people who are the experienced ones, not the coach. So for me, me it's it's just a bit more of what we've seen from Adelaide, albeit a lot less in terms of the story over the last few years. They're they're not getting their media messaging right. So just in in one word, um, Treaders and Seb, how many stories do you think – have been out there in the last 12 months that are similar-ish in some way, shape or form that have been hidden by clubs and haven't come out? I would say 10. I'd say double figures. Mm. So Yeah, oh, at least. Oh, I at, least. at least, yeah. Clubs yep. still believe that they can get away with stuff, and some of them do. And sometimes it is for the betterment of the club, you know, because the punishment doesn't necessarily fit the crime. You know, we constantly wrestle with this notion that footballers are so, supposed to be these superhuman people away from the footy field, where the likelihood is they're just like everyone else, some of them in different scenarios because they don't have the education that others do. So, I mean, yeah, what Lockie Hunter and Tyson Sengel did was 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 terrible. You know, they put people's lives at risk, but there have been plenty before them and there will mm. be plenty after them. Trent, I wanted to ask you, I'm led to believe that clubs in some cases 
have clauses in sponsorship contracts that allows the sponsor to pay less than they've committed when these things happen. So there's an enormous um, issue that gets created when these things happen for clubs. Is that sort of similar to what you hear? Yeah, absolutely. I think we can go back in history. One that I remember as a former teammate of mine, and he ate me saying that Jay Shulson is at Richmond. I think that was sponsored by the TAC. Mm. And, and he actually had an incident there. And, and I'm not sure it cost them the sponsorship, but there are numerous clauses. There's performance clauses. Like if a club mm. goes really well, plays yep. finals, there is a bonus. For example, you know, Port Adelaide uh, re signed with MG. If they go and win the premiership this year, which we don't even know we're playing or not, there is a bonus on top of that. You know, the clubs and players get bonuses. So sponsorships and mm. um, different agendas like that are no different. And then on the other side, if you bring their brand into disrepute, if I'm that business, I'm not going to want to be paying. Yep. Yep. Remember, remember, Seb, it happened with Geelong and Joel Selwood only yes. a couple of years ago. when He was caught yep. speeding down the Geelong Highway at, um, and the TAC didn't renew their deal. And that was one of the longest standing sponsorships um, in the history of the AFL. So it can happen. Absolutely, it can. Let's move on to another situation where perhaps brand control could have been an issue and it was the whispers in the sky controversy back in 2005 grant thomas tells umpires to check their ego a few days later his saints are playing Fremantle at subiaco and the dockers win with a kick after the siren vision of thomas sees him laughing you can tell he feels that he's being punished by the umpires for what he said a few hours later, on a plane, Tony Jones reports that he hears umpire Matthew Head say, now I know what victory feels like. Well, this is back on the agenda because Tony and Matthew Head have sat down for the first time. They've talked about it, and they both stick to their story. How is that possible, Sam? When one person says, you said it, I heard it, the other says, I never said it. Yeah, it happens when uh, both parties have a little bit to lose. But uh, when I get to these situations, i tell you who I always believe, the party that has less to lose, not the party that has more to lose. And in this case, it's TJ. What, what's in it for TJ making that up? Now, there'd be some sort of farcical analysis out there from people that journos like to make up stories when they don't. Their credibility is everything. Um, and Matthew Head saying that, it may have been a flippant comment. So, I mean, one, one thing of him saying it may not be at all correlated to decisions that he's made or impacted by them, but the very optics of it are shocking for the umpires. So, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, only those two will really know what happened. But, uh, yeah, if I had to pick, I'd be going with TJ. Here, here. I think it's absolutely the case. Do you think the AFL, if it did happen, would want that out there? No way in the world. You're not saying that the AFL would ever, ever do anything to oh, hide oh, things or sweep I'm things not, under the rug. I'm Jeff. not saying anyone involved oh, in see. AFL football, particularly clubs, whether it's <laughs> anyone who may have been done drink driving, it never happened. <laughs> well, th this is the thing, isn't it? And I reckon my memory of this is this was really a bit of a line in the sand moment where the league decided we're going to back umpires at all costs. And the argument that was put out at the time was if we don't protect umpires at elite level, it's going to, the, you know, the disrespect will trickle down and we're not going to be able to recruit new umpires. But in light of things we've heard today, one of them being Eddie Maguire saying, I heard it, it was said, yes, it wasn't supposed to be taken seriously, but it was said. You do look back and question the integrity of the integrity investigation, don't you? Oh, absolutely you would. Of course you would. I think the whole system is exactly that. And and for, let's face it, I get why the AFL wants to support umpires 100%. Mm -hmm. We can't get enough at grassroots level. Um, you know, This year, we can't even get players on the park, new umpires who may have been looking to get involved in the game. But also, we can't be taken for fools. And I think that's the, 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 I think the pressure test the AFL pretty much rolls with it now. They filter stuff out through various outlets. They get the take on the fans. And they really do govern by public perception. So I think realistically, that's how they roll. Now, a lot of chat this week about The Last Dance, the big Netflix documentary featuring Michael Jordan and the 1990s Chicago Bulls. And part of it, I think, is relevant to the discussion we've been having about cover-ups and so forth. I put this tweet out during the week which is uh, a line that I often hear from clubs where they say, oh, we can't do interviews. We don't want to put the guy off so he doesn't perform well on match day. And I juxtapose that with a photo of Michael Jordan from the Chicago Bulls locker room, a scene that he did after every match of his life. They play an 82-game season. They play dozens of games in the playoffs. And he took all the media questions and performed at a level that we might never, ever see again. So... Well, the point I was trying to make, and it's been lost on some people, was not about journalists and you know the questions they ask. It wasn't about athletes not wanting to answer questions. It was about, in my view, 
clubs that get in the way of telling compelling stories and selling the game. Mm. Do you think clubs could could open up a bit more, Sam? Yeah, I do. But I think there's actually a larger problem here, and that comes to the, the cultural issues in Australia. Whether we like it or not, we do have a bit of the tall poppy syndrome, and that is when we when people start to talk more than for whatever reason people like them to, they get cut down for it. You know, look at Patrick Dangerfield. He's he's long been someone that will say yes to most interviews that he's asked to do. He then becomes the president of the AFL Players Association. He goes on radio every week and talks about the issues. And if something doesn't quite align from one week to the next, it's what's this guy doing? He talks too much. Maybe he should just stay quiet. And yet in the US, they don't seem to do that. They seem to embrace people that want to have an opinion. So, yes, I think that clubs could do a lot better. Look at Heath O'Loughlin and North Melbourne. They are Mm. one of the best at doing it. They opened the doors when they made consecutive preliminary finals under Brad Scott not that long ago. There were open days in their media and player department for, for days on end. That's how it should be. Unfortunately, we are all, I feel like a lot of us are in cages because we don't really know if we let our players out We can't control what they're saying, and then are people going to criticise them, and then it blows up on social media. Yeah, for some reason it works in the States. We're still trying to get um, the right measurement here. Mm. Trent, there's probably players... Yep. You go, you go, sorry. I was just going to say players who probably want to do more but get told they can't at times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mm. and I've been out of the system 10 years, and I think it's progressed absolutely where people are more progressive. But even Patrick Dangerfield's words, as we say, we're harsh on him. But as the leader of the Players Association, like he said, he doesn't want hubs. Now he comes out last 24 hours and says he wants hubs. So I think I think it's all about media messaging. Understand and let people be human because they can spit out how they think is going to come out. And, and let's face it, you're not going to get it perfect. And I think that's the problem we find. We've got, we all know we can list them right now. The notoriously difficult clubs to deal with, especially mm. in coronavirus right now. Some only <laughs> providing content. You're like, right. this, you forget who you are. Your first and number one, and I ask to coaches too, your number one duty is to grow the game and to mm-hmm. promote the game. You yep. don't take yourself that seriously. And I think that's where NBA get it right because they put yep. a mic in Jordan or LeBron's or whatever's face. Mm. And then that brings me to, you know, where do we go? Who would we have loved to have seen over the journey? Because if we went back 20 years like the Bulls have gone, geez, mm. what would we have got from coaches and players and no, yeah. and all this sort of stuff? You know, we talk about off the record. What, we would have seen blokes on the back of a uh, rubbish truck getting a, tip, a lift home from the nightclub? Who, who knows? <laughs> but, but I think where AFL gone, AFL's gone has been brilliant, but I think we need to – open the doors, and I think coronavirus and what's gone on this year, Chris, is a great opportunity to open the doors and say we're the most inclusive sport, particularly in, this, in Australia. And, yep. Seb, let's just remember that it wasn't so many months ago that uh, a player here in Melbourne was photographed having a beer by himself on a Sunday that then got its way back through to journalists, and then all of a sudden we had a week-long talk about why Stephen May was having a beer. Was he injured? Yes. Should he have been having the beer? Probably not. Did the punishment fit the crime? A th- thousand percent not until Mm. we reel that back why would you as players want to put yourself out there and just to pick up on Treader's point and you make a good point is uh i just want to ask are there any sort of one of the great footy stories that you'd love to see made into a compelling espn 30 for 30 doco have you got one Treaders? i got three yep so i'll let my mate he's probably only got one go first okay what do you got sammy what? No, I've got, I've got nothing. <laughs> uh, I, I will say, uh, the question I get asked the most, around, yeah, just yeah. around the traps, is, do you ever sit on stories? Yeah. You know, you know, how many stories have you had that yeah. you, you know are true that you haven't mm. reported? Yeah. So and you don't want to be sued because you can't prove it other than <laughs> yeah. word no, no, no. Them, well, them versus you. There's maybe a little bit of that. So there's, there's enough of those. There's two, though, that I know are right but I haven't reported because ultimately in my heart, does the punishment fit the crime? No, it doesn't. And mm. if, if now, if my bosses knew about that and I feel like they're just going to find out about that, they would say <laughs> it's, it's up to you to report it. The, you report the facts. Don't think about anything else. But unfortunately we, we do have, we do have a responsibility sometimes to, to decide to pick and choose what are the stories that the public deserves to know? Because ultimately, that's who we answer to. We answer mm. to our readers. We answer yep. to our viewers. We answer to our listeners. Yeah. And this is where the one what I would like the, to what see. About yeah, the what about quickly? What about yep. the other one quickly that goes, um, 
What about the sauce you get, and then that sauce re- refutes your story instantly? No, that's the best one. That's that's the best one. Is you get it, and then suddenly the other person yeah. gets them on the record saying, "No, nah, that's rubbish," and then it happens anyway. Yeah, I'm happy with me. Hey, let's back. not go back into that. <laughs> but let's. Uh, all right, we talk about um, three probably generational type uh, yep. teams. Yep. I'd love to see a fly on the wall. All right. Yep. Documentary. Vossi Acker. The lines of 2001. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the yes. cat's vintage of something that may have happened in 2007 by a record 119 points. I still struggle and stay <laughs> awake at night. But the, their wonderful journey, Stevie yep. J, the cats, yeah. you know, the fighting Chapman, the yep. Bomber Thompson. Is he coaching well? Is he not? What's going yep. on? Because we all unfortunately see his personal life. And then what about the uh, four feet of the Hawks? Fast yes. forward 20 years and have that on the vision and then see yep. Clark go off yep. tap. And to lose Buddy Franklin and still win premierships, you know, that's a great... For mine, and to go to your point, Sam, the Herald Sun, one of the great newspaper men in our town, Peter Blunden in Melbourne, that is, tells a story yep. about how, um, you know, when the tragedy 9-11 happened, the Herald Sun uh, had 15 pages from the cover to the middle of the paper on what had happened in New York. The only story that has ever beat that, from the front cover to page 17 in the Herald Sun of total coverage, was... The bus stop at North Melbourne, Wayne Carey, yeah. you know, Anthony Stevens, that whole situation. And without yep. wanting to sort of pick on any scabs or anything, the story of how that team, with a player who at the time was the closest thing the AFL had to Michael Jordan in Wayne Carey, um, you know, obviously had to go in separate ways from being perennial contender, I think would be a compelling story. Would they ever be up for telling it? Probably not for reasons we can understand. Yeah. The social club, guys, let's completely switch gears. And we talk about clubs not putting out content. Well, some of the players have been absolutely exceeding themselves. And every week we pick one man to be entered into the social club. Sammy, I'm going to let you pick this one up because you brought it to the table late last week. Yeah, I just thought it was an unbelievable feat when I saw Jack Bowes, the up-and-coming star from the Gold Coast Sun. uh, Suns do this That is, that, that is just unbelievable. In fact, I've got to, I've got to dodgy. say, I have, no, hang, it's on, dodgy. hang on, Warren, I have gone through two boxes of eggs at my house in my corridor trying to do the same thing. It hasn't gone down particularly well uh, with my partner, but that's a, a different thing. But it, it's, an, it's an unbelievable soft wrist. You know, they talk about the best golfers, Seven, Warren, you're, having, you're going to have soft wrists near the greens. Jack Bowes has that, and he joins us. Jack, welcome to you. Unbelievable feats, uh, and obviously you did it first time. Talk us through it, please. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, um, contrary to Warren's belief, I actually went through about eight eggs. So, um, yeah, as you're you were saying, Sammy. That's not yeah. fair. No, no. no. I, I apologise, man. I thought it. it was dodgy. I thought it was dodgy. No, I'm still with you, Trent. Are you telling me that that was the egg that left your club that landed in the pan? Yeah, well, as Sammy said, it just takes a bit of bit of soft touch timing, um, and the trick was just putting a bit of Vaseline on the club face, and it lifted the egg up, and quite often, yeah, it, it started working. Wow, so I thought for sure it was the late get... sort of drop in on the pan with a second egg, but that's quite extraordinary. Yeah, sorry, uh, I can't lie to you, boys, but yeah, it's actually fake. Hey. Oh, wow. yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, as you you might know no (laughs) so credit uh, has to go to the digital team at the Suns um, Sammy Hocking Um, he sent me through like a TikTok uh, early last week and it had um, some person yeah doing the same thing editing it up and (laughs) all I've done is just hit a ping pong ball and uh, it's landed in the pan and then just had to keep the camera there and and sort of throw an egg in it at the same angle, and he's gone away and, and tricked it up. Jack, well, well done. Jack, Jack, no, no, no. Jack, you have broken my heart. In the space of one week of you doing that, I actually went and bought myself a whole new set of clubs. So I was so excited. I was so excited. Yep. Had, well, they're going straight back to the shop today. I can tell oh. you. <laughs> Feel free to give it a go. <laughs> I, I suppose a good thing you didn't hear Jack's initial excuse, Sammy, and go out and buy litres of Vaseline, because that would have been a little yeah. bit. Uh, <laughs> boys, but, boys, uh, boys, I was really concerned when he said he's got too much Vaseline he's putting on a golf 
<laughs> okay. Uh, we need to dig our way out of this. Uh, Jack, uh, well, we've got you, mate. Um, are you uh, are you keeping fit? Are you, are, you, are you training at the moment or what? What's happening? Yeah, yeah, trying to keep busy. Um, yep. The club is pretty, pretty good in, in handout programs to, to keep us busy, trying to get it done in the mornings and, um, yeah, whatnot. So it's the weather's been pretty good up here, so we've been pretty lucky. Jack, mm-hmm. uh, tell us, uh, what, what are your expectations for the Suns? Obviously, uh, you know, in Melbourne, we, we get stuck into them from time to time, but internally, how are you feeling if footy was to come back? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, we think we've um, had a really strong pre-season. Obviously, been one of the younger lists in the comp. We've... Um, We've been training hard, and it's nice to have a lot of re-signings as well. Obviously, in the past, we've had um, stories here and there of players wanting to leave, so I think we can feel the best 22 now with everyone signed on and dedicated, and it creates a good camaraderie. Well, fantastic. Well, Jack Vose, he is uh, a magnificent social media, if not uh, a magnificent chipper of the, mm. of the egg with the golf club. Mate, thank you for joining us on Talk of the Town. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, lads. Sorry to disappoint Thanks. you, Sammy. Yeah, no, I'm disappointed. <laughs> all, all I'll say, I was right. <laughs> yeah. That, you know what? You know what? It actually very rare. Did. Very it, rare, but I want a it, copy of this. It hurts, me, <laughs> it hurts me more that Warren was right more than the golf shot was a fake. Like, that's a double blow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that'll wrap us up. Warren Treadray, thank you. Bye-bye. Sammy McClure, always a pleasure. Got to return these Callaways now. See you, boys. <laughs> we'll see you next week on Talk of the Town. <laughs> 